maybe two months or so, but I really enjoy these live streams and I love to interact with people live as well as just talk about a whole bunch of content that I think is useful watching back after. So uh, we've just been pretty busy and that was the reason we had to stop doing live streams, but I would like to be back. So let's say tentatively, we will be back around this time on Monday nights. And I would also like to add in some time zones for like the European and Asian areas as well as time goes on. But this is a little earlier than anticipated, so I'm just gonna see who pops in and um, whoever might have questions or anything like that. So if you're watching this back, just forgive me if I'm pausing um, until people ask more questions or until anyone comes in. So I see we got one person in right now. And I usually do our live streams at 7 p.m. So, yes, Kyle, what's going on, man? I don't know if I got to know you too well before I stopped doing the live streams, but that's an awesome last name. Dell Computers grew up on those. Mr. Wizard Lena Ferdiana Saptura. Sap? Sap? Utra. Okay, there's a species of leopard gecko called the Saptura leopard gecko. I think it's something like that. It's pretty rare right now. Like nobody has any in captivity that I'm aware of. There is a video of it on YouTube if you want to check it out, but it's called the leopard gecko Saptura. Um, and it's like an Indo, uh, not Indonesian, um, but the person doing the video is, is, I don't think he's American. He's got an accent and stuff. So yes, we are trying to get live streams back um today was kind of hit or miss i was like should i do it but i wanted to do it because i still have like some cleaning and feeding to do tonight but i'm your guys i'm here so we'll answer questions hang out um so what we've been up to lately is mainly caring because when you care for um how many do we have now we probably have like I want to say 300 or 350 adult size like leopard geckos right now. When you care for that many, it does take a lot of time, especially breeding. When you're breeding leopard geckos on scale, if you're trying to do it in a way where you record the data and you keep their cages clean and you only breed like one male to one female and, and keep track of lineages really well, um, that takes a lot of time. And so that's what we've been working on. And that's just leopard geckos. We also have ball pythons that's been expanding. So our puzzle project, fingers crossed, hopefully we'll have some very nice puzzles and het puzzles this year. And tegus are coming back soon. So we've been trying to get the tegu cages prepped for return. Oh, whoops. I didn't see this. Oh, okay, cool, Kyle. In Indonesia, it's 7 a.m. Oh, that's great. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, Indo Indonesia, I've been looking at a lot of their YouTube channels lately. They do have a lot of YouTube channels um, for leopard geckos as well as fish and other exotic stuff. So that's pretty cool. JSC, what's going on, man? Good to have you here. Oh, Philippines. Nice. 9 a.m. So starting bright and early. I've been reached out to by a lot of Filipino... Um, fans as well as breeders recently so that's pretty cool because if you don't know my mom is filipino she's from cebu so you just got a lychee today that's really cool yeah we're still waiting to get lychees um i think we're gonna hold off for now because you know working with as many animals as we have we probably have like 500 animals total and so all of those are in my care uh, i, I want to make sure that all of those animals are are really well cared for what's going on junior um this was kind of a spontaneous live I just decided to put up just to kind of get back into the mix of things. Um, but Junior's Geckos, if you're looking for some leopard gecko content, um, he's bringing some new stuff and new videos to to um, the platform, to the YouTube platform. So go check him out. Um, but yeah, Lena, that's what this is for. This is for questions as well as hanging out. Um, so shoot, if you got questions. Usually I'm cleaning or something and I like have to go back and forth, but I'm not cleaning right now. I'm just going to give you guys just a straight hour of my time and hydrate before I get to cleaning for the night and do a little coffee. Also ball python feeding. Um, I have to feed my ball pythons at night. They just react better. Um, same with breeding. So all like the, the breeding and the feeding takes place at night. I just got done cleaning like a third of the ball python room. 
So, what if you breed a tangerine tremper to a sun glow? So that's good. I mean, a lot of sun glows are already um, a lot of sun glows are already tremper albino or het for tremper albino. So you'll probably get some more like sun glow trempers if they're not if it's not um, if your tang if your if your sun glow is not uh, the tremper version or whatever. Like I've always looked at sun glow as tremper, but if it's not tremper for some reason, then you might just start mixing albino strains. But um, I think you're fine doing that. I mean, breed them together. Um, that's you know, you pair a good looking gecko with a good looking gecko, um, and you're gonna get more good looking geckos. If one gecko is better looking than the other gecko, then the babies are going to be a little bit more mixed. Like some geckos will be on the lower end of looking good and other geckos will be on the higher end. So it's the same thing with black knights. And we were really fortunate this year to get a lot of really nice black knights. So we need to come up with a rating system for black knights. In the UK, they have a rating system according to letters, I think. They do like grade A is the best, grade B is second, grade C is like lesser of a black knight um i like a number scale you know so like if 10 is the best black knight that you can get it's easy to understand what an eight or a nine is in reference to that you know but unless you have like a plus a minus b plus b minus there's a lot of area for variance within what an a could be considered so anyway this year we produced probably like 20 um level eight or level nine and some level 10 black knight females like pure ones and then like another 20 crosses now the crosses are dark they're more melanistic but they're not as dark as the pure you know line bred inbred lineage so oh cool yeah derek good to see you back you know um you know, I love the live streams. I love sitting and talking to you guys. Uh, last time we did lives, I know that I was a lot of times really busy running around. But if I have an hour just to sit down and like not miss questions. So if your sun glow is tremper albino, then you're taking a tangerine tremper and breeding it to basically a tangerine hypo tremper. You're going to get some good stuff. What should I do? I think my leopard gecko is pregnant. So Mr. Wizard Jr. just said he's showing like what on his channel right now what gravid and ovulating looks like we have a really good video of uh, on our channel if you'll just look through our video history we have a video on what ovulations look like versus eggs we have a video on what what it looks like when a girl is fertile versus infertile we have another video on what fertile eggs look like versus non-fertile eggs um, so we have like two or three videos covering that topic if you'll search in our history and if you can't find them message me after and uh i'll get you the links for that so yeah i don't want to go live too late tonight because i still have to feed ball pythons tonight and if you don't know about feeding ball pythons it's a pretty it's an endeavor because ball pythons can be picky eaters sometimes and also some of the rats are pretty big and they could damage the snakes. So whenever I feed a big rat, I have to like stun it and, and throw it into the ball pythons. Um, so there's a lot of just tweaking and balancing when, when feeding ball pythons. Um, and then you have to come back like an hour later or 30 minutes later and whichever snakes did not eat, you have to try to like feed them a smaller rat or you have to take the rats they didn't eat and feed it to another snake. So it's a whole juggling game when, when you're working with, with those. So feeding usually takes, to feed the whole room usually takes like, I, I kid you not, like four or five hours. But I'm only feeding like a third of the room tonight. And that's only like 70 snakes. Think of that. Five hours to feed 70 snakes if I really try to get each snake to eat. And that's considering taking breaks here and there and coming back and, and, and making multiple attempts for a snake to get a meal. Um... You don't have to make multiple attempts for a snake to get a meal, and I've stopped doing some of that. If a snake doesn't eat, instead of trying to trade it out for a smaller meal and seeing if it will eat, um, I'll just skip over that snake and try to feed him a couple days later or the next week. So now feeding is a little bo bit more manageable. It might take like two to three hours to, to feed the, to feed like half the room or 
something like that. But that's because you're coming back and checking on them and refeeding uh, rats and stuff. So I have to feed ball pythons tonight. That's two to three hour endeavor. And then I have to clean geckos and feed geckos tonight. And that's probably like another four hour endeavor. So I got that going on tonight. Was hoping you could look at that post on these Gex Insta of my two babies that hatched from Blood Tremper. Yeah, I definitely will. If I've been a little behind on messages, I apologize. Um, we're also trying to balance the amount of babies that are hatching now and the amount of breedings that are going on. You know, so uh, let me just show you guys real quick. So we're starting to get a lot of pairings. So. Everything with a red or pink clip are geckos that are ovulating and laying eggs. So, because you have to check geckos every two weeks, um, it takes a really long time. There's a lot of time invested in, um, in pairing geckos and pulling eggs and hatching babies. So, you can see there's clips everywhere. This side is our main female rack. Like, two-thirds of that rack is clipped. Um... Two thirds of this side of the room is clipped. So that's probably, if I had to guess, there's probably like, I don't know, maybe 70 girls clipped right now. Like 70 geckos, gecko females, um, something close to that. So picture this, you're checking those geckos every two weeks. You're checking these geckos for eggs. And sometimes they don't lay on the day you're expecting. So you're checking them for three days in a row. Um, when you're trying to keep track of genetics and keep every egg alive, breeding leopard geckos on mass is a lot of work, you know? So I'm going to shoot a video on that so people kind of get a clue for what they're, what they're looking to get into, like what size scale you want to work with. Um, but what if electric bloodline times bloodline raptor het bliz, both tremper is good pairing? Yeah, pair them. Pair them. Um, if they're both tremper or het tremper bloodline, that's good. I have a black knight paired with the Murphy's pattern list. Should be interesting if anything visual happens with that, but I'm expecting it will just end up looking like a normal. Yeah, they have made Murphy's pattern list black knights. Um, they are pretty cool. Right now, I'm just focusing on breeding as many black knights as I can and getting as, as many high quality black knights as I can, as well as diversifying the black knight bloodline. So that's why we took our black knight last year and we created maybe like 20 crosses, so that's new blood. Um, and we bred for all females. This year we're gonna try to breed for like 50% males, majority males, so that we can hopefully get some really, really nice quality males. And then we're gonna be taking Black Knight into many different bloodlines and lineages um, and wild types so that we can create some really, really remarkable stuff that has really strong blood, so. How can you feed your pythons for five hours? I hate when I have to feed four geckos. Yeah, I mean, when you're doing reptiles full time, it is like any business that people talk about starting. The owner of the business is gonna be putting in more time than, than you're getting out in the beginning. But if you stick it out, it'll be worth it in the end. So for now, like I don't have an employee or, or finances to pay for an employee. So I'm just sticking it all out myself. And so it's just, my wife will tell you, it's just sheer determination and drive to get everything done every day, which is why I almost didn't do this live tonight, but I haven't had, I haven't done a live in so long that I, I really felt the urge to do it. And it's really good to talk to you guys as well. Um, but one of the reasons is because we have to take pictures take pictures of geckos, um, sell geckos, talk to people who are interested in geckos, breed geckos, pull gecko eggs, feed geckos, clean geckos, do the same with snakes, do the same with tegus, do the same with social media, making videos, editing videos, um, uh, putting up shorts. I just started doing YouTube shorts again. And for anybody listening, I just realized a while back, I, I'm so OCD about clutter uh, when it comes to the business as much as possible. My wife will tell you otherwise when it comes to our room, but when it comes to our business, I'm very OCD about things looking organized. Shorts, YouTube shorts, makes your channel's video log look really, really disorganized and really bad. If you go to like our video log and you see a, a clipping of a short, 
There's no thumbnail. It looks horrible. It looks terrible. But, so I stopped doing them. And I deleted all my old ones from last year. But they are really, really good for views and YouTube promotion. Since I've started doing shorts again, our subscriber count has like tripled in the last two weeks. Um, tripled as far as how many per day. So I was probably averaging somewhere between, maybe not tripled, I was probably averaging somewhere around 10 new subscribers per day a couple weeks ago. If I post, if I post two videos a week, 10 new subscribers per day. Um, now, adding shorts to that, we're almost averaging like almost 20 new subscribers per day when I do like two or three shorts per day, even though uh, I'm not putting out as, as much video. Like in the last week, I didn't put out any videos in the last week. I, all I did was I put out, um, I put out like 10 shorts and I'm still getting double the amount of subscribers because YouTube wants to promote shorts and they're easy for people to watch and blah, blah, blah. I'm going on now. N uh, moral of the story, shorts are good for your channel. And so are live streams most likely. So that's why, that's another reason why I want to prioritize getting them back up. So, hi, I hope your day is going good. I have a quick question. Does a female need sperm from a male to actually lay a clutch? So sometimes females can lay infertile eggs without the male sperm. So they won't be fertilized and they won't hatch. It's very rare, but there's something called parthenogenesis, parthenogenesis, um, something like that, and that's when a female fertilizes her own eggs or a reptile. This has happened with snakes and lizards, but it's very, very rare. Don't count on that. Yeah, thank you, Kimieos. Yeah, I just tried to pair my possible snow ember to a female, just like him. Tug snow, no luck. Yeah. Oh, that's another thing too. Just because a girl's ovulating does not mean she's going to pair. You should see the juggling game that I, I need to play some nights with these geckos. Um, trying different males, trying multiple times, trying different days to get a female to breed. Um, there's, there's trying the male's tub versus the female's tub, the female's tub versus the male's tub, trying a neutral tub. Like, I don't normally do all that. I just, whichever. So we have a new system here. Uh, we are now keeping some adult females, some adult females in six quart tubs. So if the females in the six quart tub, I'm going to empty the males tub for breeding and put them in there. If the female is in the 12 quart tub, I'll empty her tub and put the male in her tub. That's the way that I always have done it in the past and prefer to do it. Um, I don't do the neutral tubs and all that kind of stuff. I, I find pretty good success. But anyway, every once in a while, I'll try that, but for the most part, if, if a girl doesn't breed, I'll just try her on a different day, a different day, a different day, just keep trying, you know, different different male. Is a Max Snow an albino? No, so in ball pythons, they actually have the terminology correct, which is azanthic. Azanthic means lacking xan xanthophore, xanthophores. Xanthophores and leopard geckos is what produces yellow and red and orange pigment. Um, so, azanthic is lacking yellow, orange, red pigment. So, a snow leopard gecko is a, a diluted form of azanthic. A super snow leopard gecko is completely azanthic, where it's not showing any yellow, any red, any orange. So, thanks, Kyle. And I noticed that shorts don't have to... Did you see the short where it's like the leopard gecko is watching you? Let's see if that gecko is here right now. Because I'm telling you, that gecko is always watching. I got to make sure I don't hit my head on the fan here. I always feel like somebody's watching me. This is the gecko. She's She is usually really friendly, but she's like, Hey, what what what's up, dude? You're disturbing my rest right now. She is laying. Um, she's the one that always pops up right here in the corner and she's like always looking at me. So it's pretty cool. So this is one of our generation four lemon frost. You can see a small little bright patch right there, but it's not a bubble or anything. It's just a bright cluster of skin cells similar to how you and I have moles. Like moles have the potential to turn into a skin tumor, but they're not necessarily a, a skin tumor. It's just a cluster of cells. So we're seeing really good results with our crosses right now. 
Let's see if she's aggressive or if she's looking. Sometimes leopard geckos are just super friendly. They're just looking to lick you and um, experience you. Um, but you can see she's one of the ghost versions that are like has that really pale kind of yellow. So anyway, that's the gecko from that. So yeah, I don't usually um, prioritize humor for shorts, but that one was a humorous one. Um, what I what I notice works for some people in shorts is just showing nice animals. If you just simply show a nice animal, that video will get views and get promoted. I almost messaged you about doing a live earlier. I was hoping and thinking, you, that's cool, that's cool. You went to game and saw the notification. That's awesome. Thanks for you know sticking sticking it out with us, checking it checking us out always. You know, today I started collecting eggs. Oh, nice. That's another thing that we invested heavily into in the last like three months. I probably spent like two thousand dollars on gargoyle geckos, but the value of, I got them for really good deals. The value of those gargoyle geckos is really more like 4,000 and I got them for 2,000. That's the only reason I spent that money because I already talked to um, Greg, which is my cousin and also a business partner. I said, you know, I'm just going to focus on leopard geckos, tegus, and ball pythons. Once we grow, I'll create a, a new Caledonia room and I would also like an Abronia room but I'll create a tropical room like in, in a warehouse or in a building and I'll focus on expansion once our leopard geckos and everything are generating consistent revenue. But I couldn't pass this opportunity up. These were very nice geckos. They're on our Instagram and normally those geckos will cost twice what I got them for. So can you just hire people to upload or talk to someone who wants to buy a gecko? Um, well, if you... I'm, you know, I can, right now I'm not shipping to Indonesia. So if you're talking about buying a gecko from me, just feel free to reach out to me. We actually have five or six leopard geckos that are going up for sale. Um, that if, that I'm in communication with a few people with, but nobody's pulled the trigger yet. We have a, uh, I would call it a, a rating six or seven, maybe a six point five Black Knight. So out of 10, 10 being the best, this Black Knight is a 6.5 to 7. And we're going to be selling that one for $750. And it's already a sub-adult female. So that one will be going up for sale soon. And then we have a really, really nice tangerine. Like that's probably rated like 8 or 9 out of 10. And we'll be selling that one as a sub-adult for like 300 right now. And then there's a few babies and stuff. I'm sure you've seen us posting. If you're interested in leopard geckos, let me know before I post them to our website because I do have like five or six that I am sending people pictures of right now, people who are messaging me. Um, so, Tremper is, yeah, one of three lines of albino. Max Snow is separate. Apex wants to see honeydew. Um, okay, she's not breeding right now. Let's pull her out. Boy, you and Honeydew, bro. I mean, I love it, but... Ah, oh, man. Can't really see a lot of her pattern. But she does have some wonky pattern going on on her back. So she's going to be good to mix into, like, our um, our blood and... Uh, not blood. Our Mandarin and Tangelo line. Uh, Mandarin and Tango Crush lines. But we did just invest in a blood. And this is another thing, too. I have to... I've just been quarantining this gecko, so I haven't done a video on it. Um, but I... It passed quarantine, so I actually brought the video in the room. Um, uh, 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 I, not the video. I brought the gecko in the room last night, and I paired it to his first female. We bought, for a very good price, a super nice blood tangerine with a very nice carrot tail. It was gifted to a lady that did not focus on breeding. She was more of an educator. It was gifted to her. I don't remember the guy, the name of the guy's company, but I looked at his Instagram. He has very nice geckos. Um, this gecko is five years old, so its color is extremely faded. But the way you can tell that a leopard gecko has good genes is look at its earlier pictures and look at its current babies that, it, that it's producing. So I saw uh, pictures of the current babies that it's producing and old pictures of this leopard gecko and pictures of 
the the quality that the original owner worked with and this leopard gecko was really good carrot is down like 80 percent of the tail really really nice maybe even like 85 90 percent and so we're going to use that gecko to expand our bloodlines and sometimes you just find a really good deal on things and you can't pass it up so i found a really good deal the lady was selling it for a hundred dollars and honestly i've seen other breeders like big name breed she's not a breeder but i've seen big name breeders sell geckos just like this one for a thousand dollars um or or more and, and some breeders don't sell their top quality um breeders um there, there were some leopard gecko breeders that i met that i messaged and i was like how much for your uh, older breeders and they're like oh we don't sell our older breeders we just retire them and that's it so we're, we're going to do what's called the upgrade system, most likely. As soon as we feel like a girl is not contributing her, uh, what she could bring to the company as far as like inch for inch, space for space, dollar for dollar, we'll offer her to somebody else that can produce nice, nice animals for her. Um, anyway, needless to say, this gecko would probably be like 800 to 1,000 from one of those big breeders, but we got it for 175 shit. So... Yeah. Is there a way to test the gecko? Uh, not right now. Steve Sykes is working with a geneticist from UCLA, the same geneticist that studied um, the lemon frost gene at UCLA. His name is like Lungao Guao or something like that. And um, he uh, he's studying other genetics in leopard geckos like albino, Murphy's patternless, white and yellow i think he's studying all of that to 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 see if they know where these genetic mutations are taking place on the gecko's dna um so there's no way you can do it unless you're a scientist suburban gecko is cool um i think that he has really nice geckos i know he has a leopard gecko room that he is expanding right now um uh, I've watched a lot of his old videos before he stopped doing videos, and now he's primarily on Facebook and Instagram. Um, so he's okay. He's a cool guy. I mean, I think I've reached out to him a couple times. No response back. I wanted to do like some collaborations with him. I understand he's busy. I understand possibly he might not like us because of the lemon frost. That might be another reason why he doesn't respond. So that's all I can say at the moment about him. But He's been in the game a while. He has some nice geckos. Um, I'm going to do a video on this, but um, I'm going to show you pictures before and after and, and other pictures of leopard geckos that look better in certain lighting and not so good in other lighting. I think the way that he takes his pictures um, might be a little bit, uh, um, a little bit alluring. What, what, you know, I mean, people do that, right? It's it's called advertisement. But when some when you're buying a gecko from somebody, make sure you get pictures from multiple different lighting settings. Because anytime you have a camera, even if it's a cell phone camera, that camera is automatically making adjustments within itself. Even if you turn off the, the adjustment thing, if you like, if you get closer and farther away from the gecko, there's a mechanism in the camera that like adds color and takes away color and stuff like that. Um, so you want to get multiple pictures of geckos that you're interested in. And if the gecko is shot in a dark environment, it's always going to look better in the dark, more saturated in the dark. And I think that's one of the things I've noticed about a lot of his pictures is they're really dark. And when a picture is really dark, um, it tends to make that gecko look better. Now, on the complete opposite end, um, I do believe that the urban gecko, which is in Canada, not to be confused with suburban gecko, which is an American breeder, the urban gecko has been proven to actually Photoshop his geckos. So I would absolutely um, question buying a gecko from him. Um, and just know that the way the gecko looks is probably going to be, especially if it's a tangerine, it's probably going to be worse when you receive it. Um, I wanted to check with this person if it was okay that I share this information, but I have a friend of mine because I'm, I'm just being honest. This is just what it is, right? I have a friend of mine out here 
in Arizona that spent $1,800 on a leopard gecko from Urban Gecko, and the gecko had crypto. It was tested three times and came up positive. I think it was two, two out of those tests because the gecko was, was skinny and it was losing weight. So the Urban Gecko, if he has crypto in one of his geckos, there's a really good chance he has crypto in a lot of geckos. Now, Suburban Gecko could have crypto. Orders Exotics could have crypto. Geckos Etc. could have crypto. Anybody could have crypto. But the minute that you know for a fact that somebody has a gecko that has crypto in their um, in their breeding project, you want to be super aware of that because crypto is incurable and will kill your gecko for the mo for lack of a better term. It also spread to other geckos really easily. I'm rambling now, but things to be aware of when buying from people. Double check the lighting, ask for multiple pictures uh, of the gecko, and expect less. When you buy that gecko, expect that it's not going to look as good in person as it does in the photo, which is why I use, when I'm selling my geckos to people, when I'm selling, not necessarily when I'm uh, uh, putting up you know pictures on Instagram or trying to grab someone's attention, when I'm selling a gecko, I will send you multiple pictures of the gecko and I will tell you in person, this is what the gecko looks like. And you can have multiple pictures across different lighting settings so you can make a decision of what to expect. But expect less and then you won't be disappointed. Um, Oh, cool. $750 is 10 million rupiah. Could you imagine if we had to count in like 10 millions? So, oh yeah. I think he was bashing us then and that's what happened. Like he, um, Chris is his name from Suburban Gecko. I think he tagged us in a post once where it was like a meme of, of lemon frost breeders and then like being pieces of crap, like pieces of garbage. And he doesn't even know me. He's never had one discussion with me. And that's my problem with the people who are quick to judge on us for breeding lemon frost. They've never once talked to us about our intention for breeding lemon frost, nor the healthy collection of lemon frost that we have. They don't care. They just label you all the same. You're a piece of garbage and they're going to try to smear your name. You know what I mean? Um, and, and so I remember being tagged in that photo from him. And that's, I, me I think I messaged him back or or I commented on that and I never really got to talk to him further about that. So, and that's what I mean. The leopard gecko hobby is like so secretive, you know, like Steve from geckos, etc. He's the number one breeder in the United States right now. And he won't do an interview. He won't talk with anybody. He won't talk about lemon frost. Like that's just so secretive. And that's almost every big breeder in the hobby right now. That's why I want to be different as a big breeder, as someone who's breeding in, in large scale and mass, I want to show you the operation. I want to show you the good, the bad, the ugly. That's why I talk about crypto and other things that you need to be aware of. People who are unintentionally showing you better photos of what the gecko looks like than what it looks like in person. Be aware of all that because all of that happens. So just found you not too long ago. Love the videos. Just wanted to know how much of the black knights. So all of our best black knights, we're keeping back but uh, to breed this year. We have like 20 of them, 25 or something of of like grade 8 through 10, right? If 10 is the best, we have like 25 of them that are like 8 through 10. We have like one that is a, that is like a, 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 a quality 6 or 7 that we're going to be selling for $750 right now. So if you want to buy that female, she's a sub-adult female, $750. Let me know before I put it up on the website. Message me. So... Brittany Cavan, good to um, have you here. Oh, cool. Yeah, handling geckos is awesome. Um, I love handling the geckos when I get the chance. So, Yeah, eggs do come left and right when you got these guys. So be prepared. In my opinion, suburban geckos, yeah, uh, his photos are enhanced and, and his prices are enhanced also. Can I say that? Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll be selling this for $600 one day. But to me, this is a $300 gecko. You know what I mean? And Suburban Gecko will sell it for like 600 bucks. you know? So that's another thing to look out for. These big breeders that 
have their name established. They haven't been challenged in a while, so they've been able to just like maintain smaller collections and sell for more money. But now there's a lot more leopard gecko breeders in the hobby and a lot more people interested. So the more people, other people gain popularity, like me, what I'm doing to challenge them is, is I'm like producing a lot of geckos and selling them at a lower price per se than these other like more established breeders are so that I could get an edge, right? What are, I mean, this is the world of business. It is what it is. There's no difference between the gecko I'm selling and they're selling except that they've been breeding longer. That's it. That's the only difference. And they might not respond as, as fast or quickly to you because they are a larger breeder, you know, so. Thank you, Brittany. That's awesome of you to say. Sorry, you'll have to translate. I think that came in like um, F Filipino or Indonesian or something. From him so far, but now I'm scared. Um, here's the thing. Gecko Boa tests every gecko for crypto, but you really have to test three times. And even then, it's not a guarantee. If you get three negatives, it could have been a false negative each one of those times, which is why Gecko Boa, John Scarborough, tests all of his geckos three times. But that doesn't mean that all of his geckos are completely clear. So to me, this is just me. I don't think it's worth testing. Um, maybe if you're just starting out, uh, because it's like $25 per gecko, if you're just starting out, every gecko you bring in, you can find a lab that will do crypto tests, and you can spend $75 per breeder testing those geckos. But I'm, I'm going to do a video on this, but here's why I think it's not that big of a deal. Number one, if you get a gecko that's looking sick, quarantine it in a different room or a different cage at, at minimum, and if it proves to continue to get worse, kill the gecko and never breed that gecko. I know that sounds bad, but never breed it. Never introduce it to any of your other geckos. As time goes on, you will see if any of your other geckos got infected with whatever that gecko had. Um, <clears throat> another thing, there's a really good chance, not perfect chance, but a really good chance, even if you breed a leopard gecko that has crypto, there's a really good chance that the babies won't have crypto. Here's why. When you take the eggs of the mama, let's say there's crypto on the eggs and you incubate them in the incubator. Now there's crypto in the incubator. Crypto can survive for six to eight months in the incubator, no issues. When that little baby wakes up, it would have to lick up the crypto, ingest it to be infected with crypto. So that's that's like a lower risk, right? So everything that I'm saying right now is like lower, lower, lower risk. So the best thing you could do is Keep an eye out for sick geckos, immediately quarantine, and if those geckos never get better, or if you prove them to have crypto, put them down and throw them in the trash. Like, get, get them away from your collection. Get them out of the room of your collection as soon as possible. Yeah, and I don't want to talk bad about the guy. You know, I still think he has good geckos, and he's an excellent marketer. The urban gecko has marketed... Like, he owns the market. He is a huge... But think of this. How many breeders have bought from him? Did Suburban Gecko buy from him? Did Gary Orner buy from him? Did Geckos Etc. buy from him? So, like, anybody who's bought from him could potentially have crypto in their collection, which is something you need, you need to be aware of. You know, so... Um, that, that could be the whole hobby. So, don't freak out. But just simply be aware that if you get a sick looking gecko from him, it might not be coccidia, which is curable. It might be crypto. And if you get a sick looking gecko from any breeder, it might not be coccidia, which is curable. It might be crypto, which is incurable and oftentimes kills geckos and very easily spreads to other geckos. So you just want to be aware of that. I realize that I'm scaring some of you right now, but as somebody who has brought in multiple geckos from multiple breeders, some of them even Craigslist, take it from my opinion, keep it simple, K-I-S-S, -S, keep it simple, silly, and isolate the sick looking geckos and call them, appropriately kill them, if they prove to not get better, you know? And that goes the same for babies as well, you know? That was within the last few months, this person that I'm talking about with crypto from Urban, so. 
Thank you, Brittany. I appreciate your kind remarks. I got a leopard gecko from Urban Rectal. I have heard a lot of bad things from them. My boy is a lot lighter than... Yeah, I heard from certain people that they actually edit their photos. Now, how can you know if he edits his photos? Mm, I don't know, but I forget the reason why, but it made me actually... I really think his photos are edited for sure. Like when you look at his geckos, they look red. And then when you look at the way they res that people get them in person, they're not red whatsoever. So anyway, I know that's a strong opinion, but what can you do? I I'm not saying that the guy's a, a piece of garbage. I'm not. I still think he's an excellent breeder. He he's just, he does what he does. It is what it is, you know? This is the world of business. In the world of business, sometimes you're going to get um, I don't know what a good way to put it, but think of like personal trainers and diets and all that kind of stuff. It's all marketing, right? People don't like lemon frost because they, the original lemon frost, uh, which was heavily inbred, had some really bad tumor situations. But we are only outcrossing lemon frost, and we have like almost a hundred now, maybe. And they all look really, really good. Like, I can pull any lemon frost around here. And I'm going to do a video on this. I can pull any lemon frost and show you how good it looks. Some of them have zero issues. A uh, 100% of them have very minor issues. They're, like, I can't think of one major issue I have um, um, with any of the lemon frost. There are some that have, like... A little bit more bright spotting to them, but even then it's really reduced. It's really lessened, like it's really not bad at all, um, especially compared to some of the worst photos that you see. So I'm going to put this gal back. I have to pee real quick. I'll be right back. I don't want to bring the camera with me to the bathroom, so... Okay, now I want to show you our original lemon frost that we brought in so you could see just how nice they are after two years old. Now, the guy that we got them from, he has older specimens of these outcrossed ones, but let's take a look. Um, at six months old, this gecko was showing no bright spots whatsoever. And then probably at about a year old or maybe eight months old, um, see, I have to even look for it. It's very tough to see. Um... It has one tiny, tiny, can you see it right there? It's not a bump. Those are just his scale bumps. It's a very small little bright cluster of skin cells. Everywhere else on the gecko, of the, on the body of this gecko, this animal, is fine. I thought I saw something there, but I didn't. So we're going to keep observing these geckos. But this is a two-year-old generation three lemon frost turkmenicus which is frosty turks uh let me get another two-year-old for you now this one has one spot in more of the traditional area right there i'm sure you guys can I'm sure you guys can see it, but again, it's not, it's not bubbling over the surface. It's completely flat to the skin. It might wind up bubbling one day, but for now it's not. So it's simply a bright patch, just like you or I might have moles, right? I have a mole on the side of my cheek. That's a cluster of black cells. All that this is, is a cluster of iridophore or bright crystallite crystal cells. 
Now, most, what we have to do, what we have to study is, th this gecko has no spots anywhere else and is two years old. And this is the ghost version as well. But what we have to study with these geckos is, in the outcrossed versions, does the, um, the cancerous cells, the cluster of cells, um, do those, not cancerous, I mean tumorous cells, right there you can see, a tumor is just a cluster of cells. So uh, take that for what it's worth, but not every tumor winds up proving to be detrimental to, to the gecko's life or health or longevity. And that's one of the things that we're keeping track of. But this gecko literally has nothing anywhere else except that one little bright cluster. The question is, will that cluster spread to the rest of his body? As far as we can tell, the answer is no right now. But we will properly study that as time goes on we'll we'll take like five ten year old specimens that have very minimal um very minimal express they have such good grip he was just gripping to the bottom of the table that have very minimal expressions of brightness on the outside we want to look on their liver their heart their stomach their organs we want to dissect them and open them up to see if they do have um cancerous cells that have spread um so far in the ucla study they said that that only happened with the super lemon frost which is lemon frost to lemon frost heavily inbred leopard geckos these are heavily outbred heavily outcrossed so that's number one number two we have it from a vet and his wife who dissected multiple lemon frost with very minor um uh, skin bright patches that none of the geckos they dissected had the tumor spreading on the inside so basically you got to ask yourself am i okay with a little bright patch on a leopard gecko you know um so and another reason that we're breeding them is to study what happens when you outcross them to um very very diverse bloodlines so the turkmenicus bloodline is thought to be a subspecies or it's classified as a ret as another species of leopard gecko but it's thought to be possibly a subspecies um the afghanicus and the fasciolatus we didn't get any successful babies from the afghanicus last year but we got some pairings this year the fasciolatus is really really interesting we are so far the fasciolatus babies have no bright patches whatsoever even though they're a year old or close to a year old uh, which is the time that these guys developed so anyway i'm rambling again but they have very minor issues to nothing even after two years um so yeah i'll actually show you the black knight and the black knight for sale comes from two really good lines and i do have pictures too so you can look at the pictures um, and I would just keep this girl, but sh she's younger than I need her for right now. Wait, is this her? See how good she is? I almost don't want to, I almost don't want to sell her. This girl, $750. That's a really good price for this girl. Um, girls of her stature can still produce pure black leopard geckos. She comes from two pure black lineages. Her dad is a pure black knight. Her mom is a pure black knight. And both of them are, I would say, about level eight and a half to nine black knights. And so whenever you breed black knights, as long as you're working with the pure lineage, you can pop out pure babies. So you want to start really collecting your females. And the females that you collect, you it's okay if they're not the best quality. Like I would consider this probably like a seven on quality as far as darkness goes. If you get 20 sevens, or let's just say five, let's just say three. Let's say you buy three sevens and then you buy a male that's a nine, an eight or a nine. You're going to produce tens. I guarantee it because we have produced tens by using geckos that are not 10. You know what I mean? So 
Anyway, that's that's this is the leopard gecko right here that is for sale. Seven hundred fifty dollars. You need to message me if you're really interested. Four eight. I'll give you my phone number. Four eight zero two nine nine seven six five seven. You can also find my phone number on our website. You can message me on Instagram or Facebook, but it takes a lot longer for me to get to those channels because there's a lot of messages that I need to filter through. So again, I will repeat my number four eight zero two nine nine seven six five seven that is the best way to reach me and this gal can be yours and we'll get her shipped out to you so she's kind of like late juvenile just starting to enter into her sub-adult stage and uh i can send you more pictures and whatnot so if your female is ovulating without being bred no she will most likely reabsorb those ovulations and most likely not lay eggs but she still might lay eggs that are infertile yeah, these guys, I wonder how they come up with these prices. I shake my head at some absurd prices. Yeah. I mean, I would love, wouldn't you love to sell a gecko for 700 bucks? I would love that, but it's just not practical for a new breeder. Like, there are breeders that will pay $700 to Chris for a leopard gecko, but I want to try to make geckos more available for people, which is another reason why I kept back so many black knights because I would like to bring black knights down to like a thousand or twelve hundred for the best quality, you know, eventually over the next couple of years and like five or six hundred for the lower quality ones, you know. So anyway, right now. I've seen other breeders selling geckos just like this, like really high-end breeders like Suburban Gecko and stuff for 750 bucks. So that's why that's the price of this girl right here. Um, plus, we need to pay our bills. We need some uh, 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 finances and whatnot. So I see that 757, you just texted me uh, for extra pictures. So you'll be the first person that I respond to and you'll get the first crack from this video. But if anybody else is interested, uh, 480-299-7657. And you can see sometimes with black nights, like the gecko will even get a little bit lighter when you pull them out and the temperature changes. But when we first pulled her out, you can see that she was much darker. Either way, when this gecko is the darkest that she is, I would say she's a seven. Right now, as, as light as she is there, She's probably more like six, six and a half, but she's still really, really nice. And you're not going to find a better price right now for her. If you do, I'll price match. <laughs> How does that sound? You know? Um, and because I could really use... And one of the reasons that I'm selling her instead of keeping her is I could... I really need the money right now. The company needs the money to support itself. Um... And so, that being said, I'm willing to let go of some geckos that previously I was just going to keep, you know, and she's, this girl is one of them because of her age. She's probably not going to be ready to breed until, um, like the fall of this year, maybe late summer, fall. And I have geckos that are going to be ready to breed now and also in the spring. So that's why I'm willing to, to sell her instead of just keeping her, but I don't want to sell her too cheap. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, and we also have pictures, like, I have her dad, and I have her mom, and I can show you that they're two pure black knights, so. Yeah, here in America, the gecko game is, is much higher dollar than, like, in Indonesia and whatnot. That's why I wonder how a lot of those guys, they have, like, the best quality stuff, because they must have paid a lot of money for it, it and, and they're in a country where it's not worth as much, so it's pretty crazy. Oh, Adam's here. GGC, Kia Gecko Boa. Kia Gecko Boa. Aston Martin. Oh, DEA, Andrew stopped by. I thought you guys... So, Andrew Odin and DEA Exotics, they're two of our bigger critics, which recent, you know... Uh, Andrew and I, you know, Andrew and I have had numerous really good discussions with each other. Adam has kind of decided just to like not to like cut me off, which is why I'm surprised you're here right now. But I mean, you know, that's okay. Um, 
Yeah, Julie, if you want, we will have lots of geckos. Again, 480-299-7657. And we have a, about seven leopard geckos that, is, that are going to be going up for sale. Um, I just haven't had the chance to post them, really. So, But I do need to, for sure. You saw a guy selling some nice tangerines on Morph Market. The quality is really good. You bought a couple from someone like Urban Reptile and sold them. They would go for upwards of a thousand. He was selling. Yeah, I, I'm a deal guy. Don't get me wrong. I am a deal guy. If I can find a deal, if you show me a thousand dollar gecko for a hundred bucks, I'm buying it. Why pay a thousand dollars for a gecko that you can for the same quality that you could get for a hundred dollars? As long as you're sure. Of now you need you need to be sure of the health of the animal and all that kind of stuff. But if you want to take that risk, it's worth it for a hundred bucks. Um, unless you know absolutely the gecko is unhealthy, like crypto, then I would not buy that animal. Um, but yeah, like Adam was just saying a second ago that suburban geckos is like the Aston Martin of the leopard gecko community. Um, that might be true, but if you could get an Aston Martin for twenty thousand dollars instead of two hundred thousand dollars and it's the exact same car why wouldn't you buy the twenty thousand dollar one you know and so that's what it's going to come down to here in this leopard gecko race is who can keep up with like amount of geckos and price everyone's going to have their own market suburban geckos has been around for a while i'm not saying that he can't sell a gecko for 600 i'm just saying that newer breeders have to be willing to take a pay cut for the same quality uh, because more experienced breeders are typically the only ones that are going to get like top dollar value. Everyone else is not going to get top dollar value, which is understandable. It's that same way in almost every reptile business. So you could call suburban gecko, the Aston Martin of, of leopard gecko breeders, but that doesn't mean that he has the best geckos, nor does it mean that you can't get geckos the same quality as his for a cheaper price. You just got to keep your eyes peeled, which is why I said I always keep my eyes peeled on the market. Keep your eyes peeled. There's tons of people getting out of the leopard gecko trade and willing to take like a tenth of what they paid getting in. And those are the things that you want to uh, keep an eye out for, you know. Is this still a good hobby to get into? Yeah, leopard geckos is still a good hobby to get into. They're still the number one selling lizard in the world. I made a video um, a couple months back saying, um, is the leopard gecko hobby dead? And my conclusion is that the leopard gecko hobby is not dead, but it could be doing better than it's doing right now. It just has a lack of promotion and a lack of YouTube presence. But um, YouTubers are starting to gain uh, uh, momentum for the leopard gecko hobby. And I think we're going to see an uptick in the next five years or so. So... Yeah, let's show you dad and mom of this little one. Ooh, I don't know where the number 10 is. It's probably somewhere. There's hundreds of tubs here, so it's very hard to find the couple number 10s that we produced this year. But if you go to our Instagram, you can absolutely see the number 10s that we produced. Now, this guy is what I would consider a nine male. This is a nine out of 10 uh, for blackness. And he is the father to all of our babies. So this is the father, nine out of 10. He's looking pretty dark right now. Again, sometimes temperature will cause them to like lighten up a little bit, uh, but we'll see what happens with him. But I want to show him off because he's a super nice nine black knight. Today was a great day of breeding your 12 year old breeder. Oh, okay. Uh, still exploring this hobby. Yeah, and that's the thing. Here's why I think leopard geckos are going to be so good over the next five to 10 years. Number one, we have new breeders with new ingenuity coming into the hobby. The old breeders did not do the best of creating buzz and ingenuity around the hobby. And so it kind of began to 
uh, summit a little bit. It, it began to go on the downfall. But newer breeders are bringing new platforms and new interest back into the hobby. And leopard, leopard geckos has everything right. They're small. They come in many different colors. They're a great starter pet. So ball pythons are not so small. They come in more colors than leopard geckos, and they are a great starter pet. Leopard geckos are small. They come in lots of colors, but not as much as ball pythons, and they are a great starter pet. And think about this. As far as lizards go, no other lizard in the world has as many genetic mutations and combinations as the leopard gecko. You will always in this hobby have leopard uh, lizard people and snake people. So I believe more reptile people, more people in this hobby are into lizards than to snakes. It might be kind of like 50-50, but monitors, bearded dragons, um, water dragons, leopard geckos, uh, crested geckos, gargoyle geckos, all of those are lizards. And of those lizards, Leopard geckos are the best for color, mutation, size ability, handle ability, start ability. And snakes are ball pythons, um, retics, boas, berms. And out of all of that, ball pythons is the best. So, um, so let me show you the mom. Let me try to get caught up here. I keep seeing people say that Morph Market is dying, but... No, Morph Market is good. Morph Market is actually making changes that is helping the hobby dramatically. They keep updating their website and, and all that kind of stuff. And it's still the number one place to price match your gecko. So if you're buying a leopard gecko or a ball python and you're like, how much should this, this animal be? If you go to Morph Market, Morph Market will often tell you how much you should be paying for that. And yeah, tangerine is about 20% of the leopard gecko market, if not 50%. It's a huge percentage of the, the leopard gecko market. But I think black knights will become 20% of the leopard gecko market as we get it into more bloodlines and more projects. I have a couple projects that I'm really excited about. I don't want to give it away just yet. But think wild genetics and black knights. It's going to be amazing. Um, I don't know if I label the Black Knight Coco, but we can label it that, so. The one in my hand right now is Black Knight. Out of, out of 1 to 10, 10 being the best and darkest you could get, I would say that this is a 9, and this is our male. So this year, we're going to take him and breed him to all our females that are 7s and 8s and some females that are 9s and 10s, and we're going to incubate for males to try to produce more males and try to get some 10s and whatnot. Okay, I'm all caught up. Let me go get the female. Um, the leopard, the black knight that's for sale. This is his dad. Let me just show you the mom. Mama's pretty decent too. And she is a little smaller, but she breeds just fine. This is mom. Mom, I would also say, is an eight and a half, nine as well. I, I would say that in general, she's looking really fired up right now. Fired up meaning her black is like the darkest that I see it. Again, with temperature changes with black nights, when you pull them out, temperature and mood changes, they could be like mood rings sometimes where they lighten up a little bit. But for the most part, this is the darkest that she typically is, and this is what you'll typically see. So the light when she goes to the lightest she is, she's an eight. Right now, she's a nine. Those are those two are the parents to this one. So you know that that seven hundred fifty dollar Black Knight is coming from excellent lineage parents. You really couldn't ask for more. You know, I, I'm just being honest. You know, because. I'm, I always try to be honest before anything because uh, before I'm a businessman, I'm human. I understand. I buy a geckos too. So like I've paid for expensive geckos too. I understand that everyone wants to get it the cheapest they could get it. But this is a business. At the end of the day, you got a business you have to run and, and support. And someone who puts the time into it is also 
um, it's worth that they reap the rewards. For example, did you know if you own your own business, you have a greater chance of making more money across the course of your life than if you don't because you set your hours, you set your pay, you set how the ceiling, you set how high you can go. And right now, I'm pushing myself to 14 to 16 hour days, seven days a week. I mean, think about that. And I'm not getting paid anything. But I know that in the end, if I keep course and stay alive, nothing else, uh, um, that this business will pay off big for me in the end. But for now, for the first three to five years, it's going to be grunt work and you're going to be working for free and you're going to have financial fights with your spouse and whatnot. Thankfully, my spouse is very supportive. We still have some financial fights. We just had one the other day, but we're perfectly fine. We work through it. We figure it out and everything's okay. That's why I'm selling that gecko right there because <laughs> she she brings my words up to haunt me. She says, this is, this is, she quotes me because I tell her, hun, don't worry, if we ever get in a pinch, I'll just sell an expensive animal. So she she made me bite my own words. The other day, she's like, remember what you told me. If we ever get in a pinch, you're going to sell an animal. So sell it because we're out of savings right now and we need, we need to sell. So anyway, no trivia tonight, Apex. A matter of fact, I need to get back to cleaning here. So I'm going to be on for about another five minutes or so. And then I need to feed and clean... I need to feed ball pythons and I need to clean and breed leopard geckos tonight. But hopefully we will be back every Monday night and also we will try to throw in some random live streams in there as well. Save up $500 to $1,000 and we'll get a black knight into your hands. And someday in the future, we'll have black certain certain black knights, like level 6 or level 7s, for maybe two to $300. You know what I mean? But for now, the top quality black knights are going to go for anywhere between like $1,000 to $1,500 if they're juveniles. If they're adults, it's two to $3,000. So that's why I'm saying that baby for $750 as a grade 7, as a, as a rating 7, um... For 750 is is pretty good um so let me know anyway um my voice is getting a little tired i apologize i know there's a lot of people in here um but i really do have a lot that i need to accomplish tonight and as much as i would love to bring you along i can't accomplish it if i bring the camera along because it's just too much interacting with the camera and trying to accomplish what i do um if you have a question of any geckos we have for sale text me 480-299-7657. I have about five or seven leopard geckos that are really good quality stuff that I'm going to be selling that I have not uploaded to the website yet. Again, that's 480-299-7657 and I will send you pictures. Whoever asked me about the leopard gecko uh, for sale, 757 was your, your zip code. Um, I see you just messaged me again. You have first crack. Everybody else who messaged me after that, I will send you pictures and you'll have second, third crack and so on for the geckos we have for sale. We have really nice tangerines for sale. Um, we even have a clown looking leopard gecko for sale just because I need to make some money right now. And um, we have a pet leopard gecko that has a little bit of a thin jaw. It's growing and eating just fine. Uh, $75. And it's a tangerine eclipse, but it's only going to be $75. We do work with giants. We're breeding giants into Turkmenicus right now, since Turkmenicus is like the biggest of the wild type species. And we're also going to breed giants into Black Knight and all that kind of stuff. But for now, message me. 480-299-7657. If you buy multiple geckos from me, you always get a discount. You buy two geckos, 10% off. Three geckos, 15% off. Four geckos, 20% off, and so on, up to a max of uh, probably like 35% off. Anyway, 480-299-7657. That is the preferred way to contact me instead of Instagram or, mess or Facebook. You can also message me on Instagram or Facebook. I love you guys so much. It's really good to talk to you guys, interact with you guys, and um, I will see you guys soon, either next Monday or sooner in another video or live stream and we're going to keep up the shorts as well so 
Our female leopard geckos will get bred as soon as they start ovulating. And then if they lay infertile eggs, I will breed them every time they lay infertile eggs. Um, and even if they don't lay infertile eggs, I will try to breed them two or three times in a season of like three to four months, just so that they have a lot of sperm inside of them to produce fertile eggs for the full season. Love you guys. I will see you soon. Yes, Black Knight Super Snows will be great. But first, we need to, we at Geeky Geckos, need to make the blackest of the black and just have a whole bunch of them. So, if your hatchlings are white and yellow, they're going to be really, really bright yellow and bright green, bright oranges. All of that will be really, really bright. And also try to research their lineage to see if that you know for a fact that one of the parents was white and yellow or both. Peace. I will see you guys soon. Love you guys. Ciao.